In this video, we will showcase the Creality CR Scan Ferret Pro. The scanner uses its own scanning software, so we should first download and install it. After authenticating the app, it might need to be updated before use. Um, the same goes to the scanner after being connected. While we wait for the software update, let's take a look at the utilities the scanner provides. Here is an overview of the utilities. Using Creality CR Scan Ferret Pro frees you from the need to use a scanning spray for black or metal objects. Unlike other scanners in the market, it supports high resolution color capturing. It also has accuracy for up to 0.1 millimeters and can quickly scan medium and large objects. Don't worry about software compatibility, it supports all of the major computer and smartphone OS and is capable of exporting the scanned object as a wide variety of 3D object formats. Hold on, seems like the software update is done. Now, we just have to install the updated version by overwriting the old one. After authenticating once again, you should now be on the latest version of the Creality Scan app. As for assembling the scanner itself, all parts are laid out in the briefcase and is ready to be assembled in no time. After assembling and charging it with USB-C, press the power button once to turn it on. After the Wi-Fi icon turns blue, it's ready to be connected to the device that runs the Creality Scan app. While creating a new project, different modes can be selected for a personalized scanning experience, and you can hover on the options to view their descriptions. If the object is too complex to be fully covered with just a scan, you may consider scanning it part by part. While scanning, it's possible to rotate the object remotely to scan the object on all four sides. As for the top and bottom, you can reposition the object manually after pausing the scanner. While scanning, it is best to keep an optimal scanning distance for the highest scan quality by keeping an eye on the indication bar. Most of the time, it is safe to just process the object with the default settings. With enough effort and faces scanned, the scanned object should be near perfect. To demonstrate a direct implementation, let's export this head as an object file to be imported to Blender. After being imported to Blender, all the textures should be loaded, and the object is fully ready out of the box. By the way, the imported objects have a common offset, so if you can't find the object at the origin after importing to Blender, just take a look around. In order to scan the small figure, it has been separated into different parts for more thorough scanning. After it's been recombined in Blender, the model is now ready to be animated. Because the exported objects have many faces and vertices, 
uh, you may want to apply a decimate modifier on the object to make it easier to work with. If the object you want to scan is too small, it can be attached to a larger placeholder object so it can be scanned alongside the placeholder. Also, don't take it for granted that the scanned object is a whole solid object. Different parts may not be interconnected. It's easier to scan parts that are more exposed. For example, trying to make this figure do a T-pose allows for easier scanning and object editing. Now we will work with the bones of the figure. Making bones for a typical object should be no big deal. Just cover most of its geometric features and it should be good to go. Just try to place the bones at the center of the geometrical features so that the bones can pull their respective parts of the object around effectively in the animation. After parenting the object to the bone, um, we are now ready to animate the figure by animating the bone. After ensuring that animating the bone does in fact animate the figure properly, the rest is history. After some more motion tracking and bone animation, our figure has finally been brought to life. Thanks for watching.